Yes, viewers, we're back. We're going to run into the Alexander Gallery on Grand Street. And we're going to take a look at an exhibition by Stephen Westfall. Stay tuned. Okay. Do I have to show my vaccine passport? Well, we uh, displayed our vaccine passports, put our masks on. It's actually an installation piece. You said threshold? We'll come in and make a sweep. Now, I've been bumping into Steven since the mid-80s. Maybe I shouldn't brag about that. People don't want to pay attention to you if you're a geezer, but uh, I think Steven was kind of involved with the East Village scene back then. He was doing some writing. I think he wrote for Art in America, some other things. This is titled Spring 2021. Oh, and I was told that the title of the exhibition is Persephone. Soil on canvas 28 by 21. Well, uh, Samba Dalua Stephen actually wrote a an essay about one of my exhibitions at a little gallery I worked with called Gabriel Briars and uh, well we've kind of bounced off each other occasionally for few years. I actually covered at least a couple of his exhibitions and uh, well I like what he does and uh, I think he's a pretty articulate uh, champion for painting especially his particular variety of painting which well it's funny he started out as a very kind of formalistic abstract painter. Also, this is Persephone's Lava Light. It's 
24 by 18. Now, Stephen is a uh, California guy, and uh, well, he's probably been living in New York, you know, for thirty-five years, something like that. But uh, I think there was, there is a uh, of, uh, a California sensibility in that. Uh, Stephen is kind of influenced by what I would call the, and has been called, the California hard-edged painters. And uh, a lot of people think that the uh, hard-edged painting started with people like Frank Stella, and it was kind of a carry-on from uh, the still Mondrian and those people. and. Uh, Maybe some of the Russian constructivists, but uh, as far as World War II, post World War II art and uh, American art, this was all kind of uh, codified by a West Coast art critic. I believe his name was Julian Langser, who wrote for the one of the LA papers. And uh, he identified a group of people that were working in California, I guess mostly Southern California. John McLaughlin was one of them. Uh, a guy named Fredericks Hammersley. It's titled Treasure 2019. Anyway, um, Julian Langser curated a show that I believe appeared maybe at the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco and a couple of other places, titled Hard Edge Painting. And, uh, well, they kind of established this group as people that were doing some interesting things, and it was kind of a precursor for Oh, geometrical abstraction, color field painting, and I guess eventually probably would lead into minimalism, and then we get the Frank Stellas and the Kenneth Nolans and those kinds of people, Bryce Martin. I've talked to Stephen. You could probably go back in the files. He's curated some shows. Lennon and Weinberg, and he... Uh, talks a little bit about some of the uh, classic California hard edge painters. It's titled Atelier 2. It's 84 by 72. So 7 by 6 feet. Uh, one of the other things you might have noticed is that uh, I guess in both the the rough cuts and the calm report that there's been a lot of at least I've been covering a lot of paintings painting shows that are dealing with a lot of color and I don't know whether that's kind of a trend maybe a reaction against some of the uh, figurative painting that's been happening <laughs> zombie figuration but uh, a couple of weeks ago, we saw a show by James Ulmer, who was doing figures, but using a lot of color things. And uh, Andrew Masulo had a show we covered. Amanda Church. And of course, Stanley Whitney. I think Stephen is a very interesting colorist. And I'm looking at those two sections of kind of dirty yellows and wondering, are they exactly the same color? Is one slightly darker or does it only look that way because of the colors around it that are 
changing your perception of that. I also kind of, well, I laugh, but I guess I'm actually impressed that uh, Stephen makes a point of saying that uh, he doesn't use tape. All these edges are painted by hand. It's titled Wanderloo 2021. It's uh, wash on paper 14 by 12, 14 by 10. Northern Boulevard. Well, that's in Queens. Maybe there's one in LA too, I'm not sure. More gouache on paper. Limits of surfaces are lines. I guess there is a certain uh, nice kind of humanistic quality that you get when you're not painting with tape. Mystery train. Okay, has a couple of nice vertical pieces. It's titled By Right of the Wood. Seventy two by twenty four, so that's six by two feet. I think Stephen is also one of the people that uh, understands how to use white and off-white. A lot of color painters that I've been watching, it's like uh, they play all the keys in the middle of the keyboard. You know, if you had black on one end and white on the other, they kind of stand in the middle. Right there, Stephen is not afraid to go to the top or the bottom. I was thinking the other thing that uh, I enjoy is titled Song. Oil and Alcadon canvas about Stephen is that uh, you know, he's very articulate, very um, cerebral. And as I said, he started out as a pretty uh, overt formalist. And uh, one of the things that I noticed has happened is that the, his formalism has got a little, it's gotten a little wonky. He's kind of uh, playing some games and uh, of goofing around things so that uh, some things are just a little bit out of skew. This is a good example. Just enough out of skew to make them interesting. We'll go and finish up in the back room here. Samba. Never a clean break. I don't know where Stephen lives now, but he used to live not that far away from me in Red Hook, down at the very bottom of the hook. And he was in a building that was, well, the bottom part of it was under about six feet of water during Sandy. It's kind of titled Reclining Harlequin. Sort of kind of cells. You know, and even in the uh, in the gouaches, there's a certain amount of pedimenti overlay. I was talking about the uh, kind of the little things that these kind of skews skews things. So 
This little detail of the little tiny wedge coming in on the corner would be an example. This is Vail 2 2020. Little tango. And I would guess that this is probably about 24 by 18. And this little gem, okay, I don't see the title for it. But I was talking about Stephen knowing how to use white. There's a beautiful uh, example. We'll finish off our tour looking at this piece. And they don't have this listed with the title and dimensions, but I would say it's probably about five by six feet. Okay, now here is a painting that doesn't have any white. Doesn't need it either. sort of see that uh, yeah, Stephen is painting with a little brush, maybe a half inch wide, three quarter inch wide. James Calm reporting on Stephen Westfall. Persephon here at the Alexander Gallery. On Grand Street. Up in here at Stephen Harvey Fine Art Projects and we're gonna make a run through of a Kyle Staver show titled Painted Trails. Okay so most of these are intimately scaled mixed media drawings. Uh, we've followed Ky Kyle's career <laughs> for the last, I don't know, 10 years. I think uh, Steve might have been one of the first people that we uh, caught up with Kyle's work at, his space here. This is titled Valkyries. Mixed media, that was 9 by 12. It's titled Dolphins. Most of these are 9 by 12. It's watercolor. Salome. Um, well, Kyle has been getting a lot of attention over the last uh, five or six years. And uh, I think I've got at least a couple of her shows recorded. You can go back in the files and check them out. Hercules and the Hydra. So it seems like a lot of these recent uh, batch of drawings are dealing with mythology. SHFAP 2021. And Kyle's got a real uh, vocabulary of characters and themes that she works with. Okay. It's after closing time. This is an etching. This is Medusa 
aqua tint and etching on paper. So I've seen uh, several pieces from Kyle's recent suite of etchings. I think it was at the Michael David Gallery out in Bushwick. It's titled Miss America. etching on paper. I'm wondering if she's using any of the other interesting things like spit bites and uh, sugar lifts, all those great things. So this is Valkyries. One of the reasons I like looking at uh, Kyle's work is that she has a theme. She'll kind of work it out in various mediums. Do a drawing, do an etching, do a small painting, a large painting, maybe flip this or that around, change them. I don't know who she's working with for her etchings, but she's getting some pretty rich darks in there. It's Venus and the Octopus. It's 10 by 8. titled Susanna's Hammock, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, she had a painting in her last show at uh, Zersher Gallery based on this image. It's a nice little pair of pieces. It's titled Daniel's Head, oil pastel on paper. I think one of the things that has attracted a lot of people's uh, attention or has attracted Kyle to a lot of people's attention is her uh, use of light. A lot of her figures are used kind of a backlighting and uh, it ends up kind of almost uh, changing the, the subject's flesh into some kind of uh, transparent alabaster maybe something like that. Got a bunch of uh, pencil sketches. Hercules and the Harpy. It's titled Ascension. It's got a real nice kind of fluid drawing style, very loose, and uh, some of the little squiggles and scribbles almost make me think of Cy Twombly. They're so uh, unconstrained. This is Salome II. Christ on water. It's actually great. This is like going through her sketchbook here. It's titled Dance With Me. And you can see a lot of uh, smudging and erasure. This is untitled. I think the other thing that's kind of uh, interesting is that uh, Kyle's working with very uh, kind of a mixture of biblical and mythical themes and images, and uh, but she always keeps it kind of a uh, childlike, almost uh, naive depiction of the figures and. Uh, but she's able to really uh, lay out a nice dynamic composition. I like this one. It makes me think of some of the uh, Renaissance equestrian statues that you would see around Rome. It's titled 
winter four seasons. Okay, well, I don't see Santa Claus. That's a good sign. Spring. Oh, I get it. So there's uh, the four seasons here, I guess. Huh? This is 2020. It's 11 by eight and a half. Summer. And they're just calling this mixed media, but I would say it's uh, graphite, watercolor, and maybe some uh, china white on paper. Might even have a little uh, magic marker in there, I don't know. This is fall. Yes, with the, the mallards flying south. And the deer. Well, that was a little walkthrough of Kyle Staver Paper Trails here at the Stephen Harvey Fine Arts Project. You can like this, share, post it at all your social media sites, and you can subscribe. You can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. We just ask you to say, as always, Thank you, Kate. Whoa, thank you, thank you. Rock and roll.